the whispers of the silent cellar. Once a grand estate on the outskirts of town, the house at the end of the long dirt road had been abandoned for years. It was an imposing sight with its broken shutters, overgrown garden, and rotting wood siding. Local lore had it that the last family to live there disappeared under mysterious circumstances, leaving behind a wealth of untold stories and secrets. And so the house stood, forgotten and abandoned, until a group of curious teenagers dared to venture inside. The teens had heard the rumors about the house and had become intrigued by the possibility of uncovering its secrets. They parked their cars at the end of the dirt road and made their way towards the house. They had expected to find a typical abandoned house, with boarded up windows and broken furniture. What they found instead was a labyrinth of rooms, each one filled with dusty relics of a time long past. As they explored the house, they began to hear strange noises. At first, they dismissed them as creaking floorboards or rustling leaves. But as they descended into the basement, the noises grew louder and more ominous. The air was heavy with the scent of mold and decay. It was then that they found the cellar. The door to the cellar was old and rusted, with a padlock hanging from a chain. But the lock was old and rusted, and it was easy to pry open with a crowbar. The teenagers made their way down the creaky wooden steps, their flashlights barely illuminating the dark, damp space. At first, they saw nothing out of the ordinary. The cellar was filled with stacks of old newspapers, dusty boxes, and cobwebs. But then they heard it, a faint whispering coming from the corner of the room. They followed the sound and found a small, locked cabinet. It was locked with a combination lock, but they managed to crack it open after a few tries. Inside, they found a collection of old photographs and a journal. The photographs were of a family, the same family who had disappeared years ago. The journal was written by the father detailing his descent into madness and the unspeakable things he did to his family. As they read the journal, the whispering grew louder and more frenzied. The air became thick with the stench of death. Suddenly, a figure emerged from the shadows, a twisted and disfigured creature that had once been human. It lunged at them, its eyes filled with a hatred and rage that they couldn't comprehend. The teenagers ran for their lives, scrambling up the stairs and out of the cellar. They never spoke of what they had found, but they knew that they had stumbled upon something unspeakably evil. The house at the end of the dirt road remained abandoned, a silent testament to the horrors that lay hidden within its walls. Despite the terror they had experienced, the teenagers couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to be uncovered in the silent cellar. They were haunted by the images they had seen and the sounds they had heard. The whispers that had grown into an indescribable chorus of voices echoing in their minds. They couldn't forget the twisted figure that had attacked them. Its eyes filled with madness and hate. Days turned into weeks and the teenagers tried to put the experience behind them, but they found themselves drawn back to the house. Unable to resist the pull of the silent cellar, they came back under the cover of darkness, their flashlights casting eerie shadows across the overgrown garden. This time, they brought tools with them, determined to break through the locked doors and find out what lay hidden within the house's walls. They had heard rumors of secret passages and hidden rooms, and they were convinced that there was something more to be discovered. As they worked their way through the house, they heard the whispers again. This time they were louder, more insistent. They couldn't make out what was being said, but the words sounded ancient and filled with malice. It was as if the house itself was speaking to them, warning them to turn back. But the teenagers refused to listen. They made their way down to the cellar once again, the whispers growing louder with every step. This time they found the door to the hidden room, 
a small space tucked away behind a stack of old boxes. As they pushed open the door, they were greeted by the stench of rot and decay. The walls were covered in strange symbols and the floor was stained with blood. In the center of the room, there was an altar made of bones and human flesh. And there, standing in front of the altar, was the twisted figure they had seen before. Its eyes glowed with a malevolent light as it turned to face them. They tried to run, but the creature was too fast. It lunged at them, its claws tearing into their flesh. They fought back, using the tools they had brought with them as weapons. But it was no use. The creature was too powerful, too filled with rage and hate. One by one, the teenagers fell, their bodies torn apart by the creature's claws. And so the house at the end of the dirt road remained abandoned, a silent witness to the horrors that lay hidden within its walls. The silent cellar had claimed its victims, and no one dared to venture inside again. The whispers still echoed in the minds of those who had been brave enough to explore the house. A reminder that some secrets are better left undiscovered. Despite the terror they had experienced, the teenagers couldn't shake off the feeling that there was more to be uncovered in the silent cellar. They were haunted by the images they had seen and the sounds they had heard. The whispers that had grown into an indescribable chorus of voices, echoing in their minds. They couldn't forget the twisted figure that had attacked them, its eyes filled with madness and hate. Days turned into weeks, and the teenagers tried to put the experience behind them, but they found themselves drawn back to the house, unable to resist the pull of the silent cellar. They came back under the cover of darkness their flashlights casting eerie shadows across the overgrown garden. This time, they brought tools with them, determined to break through the locked doors and find out what lay hidden within the house's walls. They had heard rumors of secret passages and hidden rooms, and they were convinced that there was something more to be discovered. As they worked their way through the house, they heard the whispers again. This time they were louder. More insistent, they couldn't make out what was being said, but the words sounded ancient and filled with malice. It was as if the house itself was speaking to them, warning them to turn back. But the teenagers refused to listen. They made their way down to the cellar once again, the whispers growing louder with every step. This time they found the door to the hidden room, a small space tucked away behind a stack of old boxes. As they pushed open the door, they were greeted by the stench of rot and decay. The walls were covered in strange symbols and the floor was stained with blood. In the center of the room, there was an altar made of bones and human flesh. And there, standing in front of the altar, was the twisted figure they had seen before. Its eyes glowed with a malevolent light as it turned to face them. They tried to run. But the creature was too fast. It lunged at them, its claws tearing into their flesh. They fought back, using the tools they had brought with them as weapons. But it was no use. The creature was too powerful, too filled with rage and hate. One by one, the teenagers fell, their bodies torn apart by the creature's claws. And so the house at the end of the dirt road remained abandoned, a silent witness to the horrors that lay hidden within its walls. The silent cellar had claimed its victims, and no one dared to venture inside again. The whispers still echoed in the minds of those who had been brave enough to explore the house, a reminder that some secrets are better left undiscovered.